Building a model steam plant using two engines. Part 8. Pipe lagging, painting and steaming. And the good news is, there's not much pipe lagging in this video. And there's not much painting either, but there's a lot of steaming. But before the steaming, there's a small amount of work to do. But I use the term work very loosely, because I enjoy doing this anyway. This sequence is very heavily edited. I'm taking off a steam pipe, and that's it. In this clip I'm putting some cyanoacrylate adhesive on the end of the pipe and here I've just wet the end of the string and I'm wrapping it round the pipe. I wet the string so that it sticks immediately to the cyanoacrylate adhesive. Any contact with water makes the cyanoacrylate adhesive cure very quickly. And now it's time for the string winding extravaganza. I realised that when I make a video it takes longer to lag the pipe in string because any close-up views of me wrapping the string round the pipe never remained in shot. So what I did for this one was pull the camera back, and you can clearly see how much movement there is on the pipe. It's almost as though the string winds onto the pipe, and the pipe winds around the string, all in one operation, and it doesn't take long, particularly for speed the video up. And in no time at all, I've almost depleted the string, but I have three pieces of pipe very neatly lagged in string. It's time to paint the pipe. I'm using emulsion paint. This is some emulsion paint that was left over from when I painted my bedroom. This paint is called Lunatic Asylum White. No, it's not, it's not. It's called Brilliant White. This is very good quality paint and it covers the string very evenly. Here are the pieces of string with the paint drying. I'm sure you don't want to see that. I proudly present the finished steam plant. There is actually quite a lot of water noises going on in this video. So possibly it's a good idea to make a visit to the toilet before steam is raised and the engines start to run. If you watch the boiler as I light it, you will see the fire. A bit of an anticlimax, I know, but I wanted to show the fire in the boiler so that viewers don't think that I'm running this on compressed air. The noise that you can hear on the video at the moment is me filling the boiler with the hand pump. And while the boiler is happily raising steam, I think it's time to empty the displacement lubricators after the test steaming featured in the last video. I received the usual totally incorrect comment from a viewer regarding the displacement lubricators. The viewer wrote, I don't like having to say this, but displacement lubricators are not designed to be used as throttles. The lubricator should be on a T to the feed line with the valve in front. The way you have it, you will drain the oil in five minutes instead of an hour. Oh well, it's your engines. Now come on. First of all, if you look closely at the displacement lubricators, you will see that the valve is before the displacement lubricator from the turret. He'd failed to spot the obvious, so I replied, You, sir, are depriving some poor village of its idiot. No, I didn't say that. That was a small joke. I do apologise for the joke. Maybe I wanted to say that, but no, I wrote this. Wrong as usual, these are not my engines. I repeat, these are not my engines. I don't think that you noticed, but I actually do this commercially, the proceeds of which go towards making me a living, and therefore I always have to use the components that are supplied by the customer. Plus, these lubricators with their attached regulator, I use the correct term you will note, only need emptying and refilling every hour. Comments like this don't bother me in the slightest. They just give me some material to put on the videos at a time when the little steam boiler is raising the steam and I'm just emptying and refilling displacement lubricators. With around £40 per square inch showing on the pressure gauge, I'm going to pump some more water in. That's the noise you can hear in the background, and of course it's highly amplified because I've turned the volume up. Some pumps make noises like this, and other ones don't. This one is particularly noisy. It could be that the ball travel is a bit excessive inside the ball valves. But anyway, it's still pumping water into the boiler, which is the main thing. Because this steam boiler is new, it's doing something called priming. And this is generally due to impurities in the water from the silver soldering process. And it gets better with time. The whistle is drawing water from the boiler. Not the initial water that you would get, not the condensation type water. This is actually drawing water directly from the boiler. And if I carried on blowing the whistle, the boiler would empty. What I'm doing now is opening the steam regulator valve to let some steam into the Cyclops engine. Initially there's a bit of condensation, but then off it goes. The steam is still very wet and you can hear it gurgling if you listen carefully.
You will notice that I'm applying some oil to the engine when it's running. This is not a good idea, but I do it sometimes. And if you do this yourself, make sure you don't catch the oil can spout in any of the moving parts, as this could be very bad for the engine, or even worse, it could be really bad for my very, very old, very good quality Rylang oil can. I've had this for many years and I'm quite attached to it. I think that's about it really for this one. I'm not going to speak over it. I'm just going to let the process run by itself. The last thing that I would like to say, and you will notice this in the video, it's a bit of a balancing act getting both of the engines to run together. This is a very small boiler, so there isn't much steam to spare. But after a bit of messing about and setting the valves, they run quite happily. That is, until I pump some cold water into the boiler. You'll see this in the video, and I had to do it two or three times. This video is quite heavily edited. The steaming actually took about two and a half hours. In this part of the video, you can see what I mean about the balancing act between the two engines. Frequent adjustment of the regulator valves was necessary to get them to run together. I've really enjoyed building up this steam plant, and I'll be sad to see it go on Thursday, but at least I will have some more space on my workbench again. So that's it from me, thanks for watching, and I hope you find it, well, entertaining.